Jesus is Lord Church. We're so excited that you've chosen to worship with us today. If you have any questions or concerns, make sure you stop by our Connect station for more information. Attention Jesus is Lord family, our JILC Dream Team is currently recruiting for media and worship. If you're interested in being a part of these two powerful groups, you can sign up today at any of the Connect Centers. JILC Dream Team, we're better together. JILC Family Empowered Kids is the place to be every Sunday morning for your children. Fun, games, activities, and ministry that's right on their level is sure to make an impact on their lives for Jesus. If your kids are missing Empowered Kids, they're missing it. Empowered Kids, every Sunday morning, right here at Jesus' Lord Church. Empowered Live is now broadcasting with a live studio audience. The only thing that's missing is you. If you'd like to be a part of our Power Pack studio audience, join us every Monday at 8 p.m. for our Empowered Live broadcast with Pastor Kevin McGinnis. Empowered Live, Mondays at 8 p.m. Are you ready for a little pick-me-up to help you get through your work week? Join us every Thursday for Jesus is Lord midweek service at 7 p.m. For more information, visit us at the Connect Station. Calling all teenagers ages 13 to 19. Are you ready to show the next generation the love of God? Join our Empowered Youth Services on the second Friday of every month. Services begin at 7 p.m. Young adults ages 20 to 40, are you committed to creating a culture that connects and cares? Join us for our next Young Adult Night on the third Friday of every month. Services begin at 7 p.m.
everybody, it's Pastor Kevin McGinnis. Thank you for joining us for Jesus is Lord Church. It's going to be an amazing service today. I believe your faith is about to go to another level. Now stay tuned because I believe with all of my heart that this word is going to encourage you, bless you, and empower you to become all that God is destined for you to be.
tonight. We serve the promise keeper. We serve the way maker tonight. Hallelujah. Come on and lift your hands in this place. And thank God for every miracle you have received in your life. We thank you, Jesus. We worship Come on and lift your hands in this place. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, we thank you for your power. We worship you, Lord. You're the God of miracles tonight, Jesus. the God of miracles, signs and wonders, we believe in your power, we believe in your power, you're the God of miracles, signs and wonders, and we believe in your power, Lord, we Yeah. 
just declare that over their life tonight. That you're a miracle work. See, you're a promise keep. You are a way maker. See, you're a miracle work. See, you're a miracle worker. Have you any rivers that you can't seem to get through? you can't move out of your way. Just know that God still sees. Just know that God still hears. Just know that God still sees. Just know that God still hears. See your miracle work. See your miracle work. See your miracle work. See your miracle work. Ghost because Jesus is here and the Holy Ghost is here. Hallelujah. So we just want to worship him for a few minutes. Take your mind off your problems. You have no problems. The air quality in here is perfect. Perfect. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is here and the Holy Ghost is here. And when he breathes on us, it starts a whole new life in us. Start, something starts to happen. Something starts to move. So just lift your hands to Jesus. Go ahead. You flow with this, honey. You're going to flow with this, organ player. You're going to flow with this. Good, 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 good. Tell him how much you love him. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. See, God gets our attention and we get his attention when we start praising him hallelujah hallelujah he's watching us now so what are you going to give him hallelujah he's here tonight what are you going to say what are you going to do you're going to believe him tonight hallelujah you're going to shake off the, all those old things old clothes that you're wearing hallelujah and let's step into something new tonight he's new every single day hallelujah hallelujah we're talking about revival we're talking about revival meaning but god wants to revive us hallelujah because that's where it's going to start hallelujah with us uh, glory 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 every battle in the bible in deuteronomy he says when you go out to battle and you see horses and soldiers too numerous for you he said don't worry about i'm the god who took you out of egypt he says that i'm going to do it again say he's going to do it again I don't care what you're going through. You know that God is a deliverer. Say so he's going to do it again. You got to participate. He's going to do it again. If he healed you once, he's going to do it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gave him a miracle once. He's going to do it again. He financially blessed you. He did it once. He's going to do it again. Because it's a great awakening that's going to happen. Hallelujah. God's going to wake up his church. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Hallelujah. Praise him in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I'm not going to let you go. I'm going to push you to your purpose. Glory, glory. 
Glory, glory. Before Pastor Kevin comes out on fire for God, uh, you're going to be on fire. Glory, 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 because God's raising up a body of believers. How many believers do we have here? How many praises do we have here? Glory, glory. Go ahead. Those of you home watching us, waiting, waiting, waiting for someone to do it. God says, I've given you all the power. I've given you all the authority. I've given you the Holy Ghost. I've given you my word. Go ahead, praise him. but God is going to wake us up because the church has been sleeping. The church has been waiting for God to do something, but God says, I'm ready to do it. I've always been ready to do it. My Holy Ghost never changed. He says, I'm waiting for my bride to step up. I'm waiting for my bride to believe. Go ahead, praise him. We believe. We believe. We believe there's a people that are tired of sin, tired of religion, Tired of storytelling, sorry of, of stories of compromise, but God says I'm going to wake up the ones that have been sleeping. Hallelujah! He says suddenly they're going to be aware. Hallelujah! God's talking about suddenly. I want more. Suddenly, 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 He's going to wake up the church. How about you? Suddenly, you're going to see something change in your life. Suddenly, He's going to. Bless your family like you never thought he could. Suddenly he's going to heal your body. Suddenly he's going to give you peace of mind. Suddenly, suddenly, he doesn't care if you're 100 or you're one year old. Praise him in the Holy Ghost. Praise him in the Holy Ghost. Great awaken. Suddenly, I turn around and I got an emptiness. I want more and more and more. So you got a hunger. You got a thirst for God. God goes where you're hungry. God comes where you're hungry. And if you're hungry, he's going to fill you tonight. Hallelujah. A great awakening. Awakening of the cross has to come. That's the only way to God, church. It's the cross of Jesus Christ. It's the only way for salvation. It's the only way to be justified. And it's the only way to be sanctified. It's the cross. It's the power of God to those that believe it's the only way. Great awakening of the word of God. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. God says, I'm going to bless it. Nothing's going to come against my word. And when I speak it, something's going to happen. I'm going to break that fellow ground. I'm going to change things in your life that you never thought could change. He says, it's going to be awakening of the Holy Ghost and power. Hallelujah. He's here tonight. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You're here tonight. Hallelujah. There's an awakening of prayer. We're going to pray like we never did. Our hearts are going to commune with God. Hallelujah. There's going to be awakening of the love of God. It's beyond all your understanding. All of a sudden, you feel rejected. You feel like there's no hope. And the love of God comes down. And he puts his arms around you. He says, I'm with you. I love you always, even to the end. He says, there'll be a revival of faith. And nothing will be impossible to them that believe. To them that believe. What are you believing for? You say, oh, that's too hard. No, no, it's not too hard. There's nothing impossible with God if, to those who believe. Do we have believers here tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a great awakening of the bride of Christ coming out of the wilderness. They've been dry, and they've been complaining, and they've been murmuring. God says the river of life is going to start to flow through the body of Christ like never before. And those that have been dry and those that have been thirsty and parched, he says, I'm going to fill you the waters of life. He says, for coming down from the throne of God, a great awakening. 
get ready. Everything that could be shaken is going to be shaken. I said, God, shake me. Shake me out of my complacency. Shake me out of lethargy. Shake me out of this flesh. Shake me out of unbelief. And God saying, put on the new man. Put on the cloak of righteousness. Hallelujah. He says, I'm going to refresh you. And you're going to see that everything that can't be shaken will be shaken. An awakening of unity. That's going to be the final. I believe great generals have gone to the Lord. Recently today, Pat Robinson, that's how I got saved, watching 700 Club, bent down on my knees. I said, Lord, come into my life, and he led that prayer. He's gone to be the Lord. There's a great cloud of witnesses that are watching over the heroes of faith from the beginning of time that believe God. But God says in this last time, I'm not going to only use the preacher. I'm going to use my whole body because the two shall become one. One body, one hand head and we're gonna watch hallelujah in the in the victory of god hallelujah at may at midnight he says we're gonna have one voice just like paul and silas and he says we're gonna have one voice praising god one voice one praise go ahead one midnight hallelujah the bridegroom is coming he says tell them that jesus is coming go ahead turn to someone walk over to someone and say jesus is coming Go ahead, go ahead, tell them, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. The more you say it, the more something happens deep within your spirit. Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. Be ready, be ready, he's coming. Hallelujah for a church without spot, for a church without wrinkles. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said the glory of the slaughterhouse will be greater than the former. It's something the world has not seen. Because all of a sudden, they're going to look at the church. It says, who's that coming out of the wilderness? Who's those nobodies? Hallelujah. I have news for the devil. We're somebody. Hallelujah. How many somebodies do we have here? Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Praise him as they come, as they sing. Hallelujah. And they praise him. Hallelujah. Don't stop there. Don't wait for the preacher to stop. Hallelujah. 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 We got to go over. More than you ask, more than you think. God is here. He's here to bless. He's here to heal. And he's here to set you free. He's here to use you. He's using. He wants to use you. Leave room for the Holy Ghost. Leave room for the Holy Ghost. He's the preacher. He's the preacher. He's the preacher. The glory of the latter house. The glory of the latter. The glory of the latter house. Hallelujah.
from me restore unto me the very joy of my salvation give the Lord praise and give him glory right now hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord you may be seated you know the Bible says that Paul said something to the church at Rome he said, never let the fire that's in your heart go out. You have got to keep it alive. You personally, because you cannot experience a revival corporately until you first experience a revival personally. It is so important every day that you spend time with the Lord. I can tell those that do and those that don't. Because those that spend time in the presence of God, there is a joy. There is a zeal. There is a passion. There is an excitement when we come together. The highlight of my week is getting together with God's people. 
The highlight, amen, of celebration is what I'm doing personally is to come together collectively and corporately and worship and glorify God together. This is not the extent of your salvation. That your salvation is developed and your relationship with God, your intimacy with the Holy Spirit is developed personally alone with God. Say amen. How many of you spend time with God today? Can I see your hand? God bless each and every one of you. But you need to understand and realize this. You will never see a revival around you until there's a revival first inside of you. Revival begins. Say this with me. Revival begins with me. Matthew 5 and 6 says, They that hunger and thirst, those that desire, those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, they shall be filled. How many of you are going to be filled tonight? How many of you are ready for a fresh infilling, a divine overflow of the presence of God? Make some noise and give God praise and give him glory right now. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. The psalmist cried out and he said something that is so powerful. In Psalm 85 and 6, he said, wilt thou revive us again? Say that together, Lord, revive us again. Shout it out, Lord, revive us again. He said, wilt thou not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you there is a burning passion tonight in my heart there is a burning passion and a fire in my heart to see lives transformed for the glory of God how many of you believe this is the year your family is going to surrender I said how many of you believe this is the year your family is going to yield and surrender to God's plan for their life let me see your hand jump on your feet let me see who those of you tonight that really believe this is the year that God is going to transform every life that is connected to you. Come on, somebody give God praise and give him glory. How many of you are burning for souls? Say amen. There's a burning desire, a passion in my heart to see life transformed by God. Amen. What about you? Do you have that fire? What about you? Do you have that burning, intense passion for God? What about you tonight? I'm talking to you tonight. Have you lost your passion? Have you lost your fire? Come on, somebody. We have got to have a cry for revival. Everybody say revival cry. That's what I want to talk about tonight. A revival cry. Everybody say revival cry. Somebody release a revival cry right now. Somebody that's on fire, release a revival cry right now. Come on, lift your voice and glorify the Lord. We're crying out tonight from Long Island. We're crying out for revival. We're crying out for America to be shaken. We're crying out for the lost and the dying and the destitute and the afflicted. We're crying out for the backslidden. We're crying out for the broken. Somebody lift up a cry to God for revival tonight. Come on, somebody. A revival cry is something that is released deep inside of you. In Psalm 119 and verse 154, he said this, the psalmist, he said, plead my cause and redeem me, revive me and give me life according to your word. He said, plead my cause and redeem me, God. He said, revive me. Everybody say, revive me. Say, revive me, God. And give me life. Say, give me life according to your word. Isn't that what revival is? something that was dead coming back to life how many of you know some people that claim to be Christians that are dead they're about to come back to life because the wind of change is getting ready to blow in their direction somebody shout aloud hallelujah right now clap your hands everybody and shout Lord I need you more than ever before come on clap your hands and shout aloud hallelujah does your heart burn when you talk about God are you more on fire for God today than you've ever been before? Listen to what they said in Luke 24, 32. They said to one another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us, by the way, and while he opened up to us his scriptures? I like the message translation. Watch this. He said, back and forth they talked. Back and forth. Kevin, pay attention. Back and forth they talked. Didn't we feel on fire as he conversed with us on the road as he opened up the scriptures for us? He said this, back and forth they talked. Didn't we feel on fire? I love the message translation. Didn't we feel on fire as he conversed with us on the road as he opened up the scriptures for us? Their hearts burned within them. Say amen.
Is your heart burning today? Are you more hungry for God today than you've ever been before? I can honestly say tonight, many of you can say it, but you cannot honestly say it. I'm more on fire for God today than I've ever been in all of my life. Can somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Their hearts burn within them and there is a burning passion. There is an intense desire. There is an overwhelming hunger in my heart in this hour to see lives transformed by the power and for the glory of almighty God if you're hungry God will use you if you're not he'll bypass you but there's a remnant of people that is God is raising up in this hour that's going to make an impact on planet earth that will echo on throughout eternity raise your hands and say Lord use me let's talk tonight How's your passion for Jesus? How's your passion for souls? How's your passion for prayer? How's your passion for the word of God? How's your passion for his presence? Do you have a passion for God's power? Do you have a passion for purity and holiness? Do you have a passion for the word of God? If you do, say I do. The time that we're in, Amos said in 811, he said, the time is surely coming. Everybody say, the time is now. Sayeth the Lord, when I will send a famine on the land. He said, not a famine of bread or water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Say it together. Hearing the words of the Lord. There will come a famine, not of just bread and water, but a famine of hearing the word of the Lord. Amen. How many of you know today there is a famine of hearing the word of the Lord? He said there will not come a famine of preaching, but there will come a famine of people that cannot hear or refuse to listen to the word of the Lord. Can you say amen, somebody? I love what Jeremiah said. He said the word of God that was in my heart, it was like fire shut up in my bones. The word that God has placed in my heart tonight. It is like fire, hallelujah. That is fire in my bones. Can somebody shout aloud, hallelujah? I don't know if you notice this or not. You've got to be you've got to be dead not to realize it that America is in a spiritual mess. Sin is running rampant like never before. But now say, sin is not being hidden. Sin is open. And they are blatantly mocking God by their unholy, perverse lifestyle. But listen to me. It's one thing for sin to be running rampant in the world, but it has now invaded the church. Everybody say, that should not be. The psalmist David was in the same situation. And the more, most important thing was he was going to, he was willing to cry out to God to save them. Can you say amen? In Psalm 130, go with me to Psalm 130. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said praise God. Hallelujah. This is going to be the shortest sermon of my life. Hallelujah. I got to drive four hours tonight to the retreat. Two days of production at the retreat. We got people that are already there from here. And we got people flying in from Florida too. So I'll be up probably to 3 a.m. Amen. Will you bear with me tonight? The psalmist David said this. I'm hungry. Are you hungry for God? Shout amen. Psalm 130 verse 1. The psalmist said out of the depths of my heart, I cried to you. Oh, Lord, hear my voice. Everybody shout, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sin, oh, Lord, who could stand? None of us could stand if God would use our sin against us. Can you say amen? But aren't you glad that God erased, hallelujah, and washed away the handwriting that was on the wall, hallelujah, that we were once lost in sin, but thank God we accepted Christ and Jesus took us in and we have never been the same again, hallelujah. I'm, I have a problem with people, Dr. Rose, that claim to be Christians and still live a sinful lifestyle, but I'm here to tell you tonight, all of us have fallen short of the glory of God but thank God for his mercy you should be jumping thank God for his grace that God did not use our sin against us but thank God he sent his son to be the propitiation 
remission of our sin. He sent his son to die on a cross and shed his blood that we might be redeemed. And I don't know about you, I'm glad that God did not judge me according to my sin. But thank God he redeemed me by the precious blood of his only son, Jesus Christ. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. The summer said out of the depths I cried to you. Oh Lord, hear my voice. Say say this with me. God, hear me tonight. Everybody say, Lord, open your ears to my cry for mercy. Look at verse 3. If you, Lord, kept a record of sin, Lord, who could stand? Everybody say, nobody could stand. I'm tired of people in the church that are always judgmental and critical. This is why a lot of the younger generation does not want to worship and come to church because you have a lot of older saints. like They call themselves seasoned saints, but I call them miserable saints. Are you listening to me? And they're always looking to judge people and criticize people based on what they know about people. But aren't you glad that God, hallelujah, after all that he knows about us, he shed his blood, hallelujah, and sent his son to die in our place. Can somebody shout aloud hallelujah. Thank God for the blood of God's precious son Jesus tonight. I said thank God for the precious blood of Jesus. None of us could stand but tonight we stand by the mercy and the grace of God and without the grace of God none of us could stand but tonight we should celebrate together on this Thursday night in the first week of June for the mercy and the grace of almighty God praise him that he didn't give you what you deserved praise him that he extended grace and gave you mercy shout amen if you Lord kept a record of sin oh Lord who could stand but with you everybody say with the Lord say it together with the Lord everybody say because of God everybody say because of Jesus there is forgiveness I love this but this is the psalmist before Jesus ever came he said but with God there is forgiveness so that we can we that we can with reverence serve you hallelujah how many of you are serving the Lord Oh, hallelujah. I love what the psalmist said. He said, out of the depths of my heart, I cried out to God. Oh, Lord, hear my voice. His prayer illustrates the cry for revival that will be heard. And the first thing I want to show you tonight is it was, everybody say, a humble cry. You've got to come to God humbly. Amen. You've got to cry out to him, hallelujah, with the full assurance of faith that God, hallelujah, will hear your cry. No matter how many times you've fallen a righteous man falls seven times but gets back up again can somebody shout amen so stop judging people based on what you know about people because if you had any spiritual sense if you had any scriptural foundation you would understand that God has forgiven us and he does not use our history to cancel our destiny are you with me somebody said well pastor do you know about so and so well how about what I know about you how about that how about the things God does delivered you from how about the things I knew about you and I didn't expose about you why don't we extend the same level of love and mercy and grace to people hallelujah because Jesus did not come to condemn people Jesus came that all men might be saved Peter said I'm willing none perish but all come to repentance shout amen somebody so the first thing that the psalmist did it reveals to us number one I'm going to give you five five quick powerful cries for revival it was a humble cry everybody say a humble cry God resists the proud but gives grace hallelujah to the lamb unto the humble everybody say God turns away the proud there are people here and tonight maybe watching online you may think that you're better than everybody else be careful pride brings destruction are you listening to me I know a lot of preachers a lot of preachers and many of them are bound by a spirit of pride they think they can live any way they want for their life does not have to align itself with the word of God but they are deceived this word that I preach it will bring judgment upon me as the way God says he'll bring judgment on you if you intentionally ignore and disobey the word of God preachers do not have special privileges because they have a title are you listening to me preachers are supposed to love their wives preachers are supposed to treat people the way they want to be treated 
somebody shout amen so the first thing David did he said out of the depths of my heart I cried out everybody say a humble cry God will receive you no matter what you've done hallelujah no matter how far you've drifted no matter how far gone you may think you you are I'm here to tell you if you come to God and you cry out to him he will receive you just as you are we all have people that we've evangelized and witnessed to we have people that we've gone to and we said you need to come Jesus loves you and then they give you the list well I'm not ready there are things in my life I got to eliminate from my life I got to clean myself up but that's not the way it works you come dirty you come broken Jesus will receive you and he will restore you and it's up to the church Galatians 6 those of us that are spiritual we are to restore those hallelujah that have fallen away from the faith hallelujah are you hungry for God clap your hands do you have a burning desire and a passion to see life transformed in 2023 if you're with me shout amen David had a humble cry he said Lord he says no one could stand if you would keep a record concerning our sin the proud always believe the proud those that are bound by pride they always believe that everybody else is the problem they believe my God I don't know how blind people can be how arrogant and how egotistical people can be I know so many people that go to church and they're total narcissists they think that the word is for everybody else but the word is not for them are you listening to me but the proud think everybody else is the problem but I'm okay you're not okay and you're gonna be judged by this word if you don't repent when you stand before a holy God that on that day say amen God will restore God will release mercy to those that are humble but the proud will receive the Bible says nothing from the Lord oh there's one thing you might receive and it's not mercy and grace the proud if they don't repent will receive something from God all right they will receive the penalty of judgment are you listening to me that's why God sent his son that you won't have to be judged but if you will receive that love tonight Jesus Christ will forgive you he will restore you and you'll never be the same again shout amen somebody in Isaiah 57 I love what the prophet Isaiah said for this is what the high and exalted one there's only one that's high and exalted hallelujah and it's Jesus Christ it's God almighty hallelujah for this is what the prophet Isaiah said the high and exalted one says he who lives forever are you with me and I'm Isaiah 57 and verse 15 on the screen if you don't have a Bible whose name is everybody say his name is everybody shout his name is holy he, this is what the prophet said he lives forever he's highly he's high and he is exalted whose name is holy listen to what he said I live in a high and holy place say a high and holy place but also with the one who is contrite those that are humble lowly in spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly hallelujah glory to God he says I revive I revive the lowly I bring revival to the humble I revive the heart of the contrite say amen everybody say the first cry has to be a humble cry if you want revival in your life let me hear you release a cry of humility to your king tonight shout amen clap your hands give God praise and give him glory I feel the Holy Ghost right now everybody shout a humble cry and number two there has to be an expectant cry three hours before service I was there good to have you back Rick hallelujah good to see you the Bible says that David cried out with an expectant cry and this is what I did after this afternoon as I was praying and positioning myself to be used of God you can't just come behind a pulpit or lead worship or play an instrument if your heart is not prepared you cannot go out on the streets and effectively evangelize and make an impact if your spirit is not prepared you got to be prayed up you got to re be ready somebody shout amen everybody say this is war and the Bible says that David cried out with a, everybody say an expectant cry in Psalm 130 and verse 5 listen to what he said I wait for the Lord are you with me my soul does wait hallelujah everybody say expectation is the breeding ground for every miracle I wait for the Lord the psalmist said my soul does wait and his word everybody say in God's word 
do I hope, oh my God, I could preach that all night long. In his word, do I hope. I have no hope in government. I don't put my faith in man. I've got my faith in the creator of man. I do not put my faith in the creation. I've got my faith in God, the creator of all things. Shout amen, somebody. So it was an expectant cry. He said, I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait. Hallelujah. In his word, do I hope. If you're with me, say amen. Shout hallelujah in the first three rows. The psalmist believed God. He would hear him. The psalmist had faith that when he prayed, God heard and God answered. Say, God hears and God answers. Say with me, God hears and God still answers. Isn't that what Jeremiah the prophet said in the 33rd chapter of Jeremiah? He said in the third verse, I called upon the Lord and the Lord answered me and the Lord showed me great and mighty things that I knew not. Hallelujah. Everybody say, when I pray and I cry out, my God, God hears and God answers. Tonight we're going to cry out and God hears and God answers and God is about to move favorably on behalf of the humble and those that came with divine expectation into this service tonight. Listen to me, some of you are guilty for the, for the sin of familiarity. You, you're guilty. You come to church, you've been here so long. You think, well, I'll just go through the motions, show up. You are guilty for one sin tonight, if any. The sin of becoming familiar with the Holy Ghost and with the anointing and the gifts that God has placed over your life for your development and for your growth. We we should never come into this building with a spirit of familiarity. We should never become familiar with one another. That's why Paul said, no man, no, no man after the flesh can you say amen. But we need to understand tonight that every time we join together in the spirit of faith and agreement, something happens. Miracles are unlocked and blessings are released upon our lives. Somebody release a cry for your family right now. A cry of humility, a cry of expectation. Everybody say a cry of expectation. The psalmist believed that God hears and God answers. How many of you believe, don't just raise your hand, but you believe every time you pray, God hears and God promised to answer. Somebody said, well, pastor, I've been praying for three years for a man and God hasn't heard me. No, the answer is the no answer and the no response is your answer. Not now. Are you listening to me? Well, pastor, I want to move and I want to do this and I want to do that. If God has not spoken, do nothing. My father told us all years ago, when you make a decision based out of a need, it's going to be a mistake. Are you listening to me? I learned that early on in my early 20s because most people, they make decisions based on opportunity. But not every door that opens is an opportunity that God is making available to you. Come on, somebody. Well, everything that glitters is not gold. Are you listening to me? Somebody shout amen. Somebody said, well, pastor, I got a job opportunity to make 150000 a year. I don't care if you've got a job opportunity making $5 million a year. It does not mean it's God. God, my God, God blesses his people, but also the enemy knows how to place money before you and lead you away from your assignment and your purpose. For you. I'm preaching the word of God tonight, whether you know it or not. And I don't know about you. I'm hungry for God. I'm ready for revival. And revival is not happening in 10 years. Revival is happening tonight, right now, in somebody's heart. Same Amen. The Bible says God hears my prayer. Say this with me. God hears me and answers. So, somebody said, well, I don't see it. Does not mean God's not working. Say amen. Well, I prayed for a miracle and I didn't get a miracle. Well, God's developing your character. Say amen. The waiting period is your season of development. Come on. Will you hear Sunday? Shout amen. He said, I prayed. I waited for the Lord. Hallelujah. He believed God heard his prayer. Biblical hope, biblical hope, biblical faith is not a hope, a wish, or even a desire. But a biblical hope and biblical faith is confident. Everybody say, I have confident expectation that every one of my promises are going to manifest. Say it again. I have confident expectation that every single promise is going to manifest this year. Shout if you believe it. Listen, we've got to serve God and come boldly to the throne room of grace. 
I believe, and I come tonight with confident expectation that everything God promised me, he's going to bring it to pass. How do I know? God cannot lie. He cannot lie, and he cannot violate his word. Say amen. Somebody said God doesn't have to do anything. Well, shows me that you're very shallow in your prayer life and in your word life. God has to do everything in his word. There are over 7,000 promises in this book. Are you listening to me? God's got to do everything he's promised us. Can you say amen? Somebody said, well, you know, God doesn't have to do anything. Well, if he gave you a promise and he gave you a word and he sent the prophet to prophesy over you, that's exactly what he has to do. But God is not obligated to the obvious. God is obligated to people that are in this house that have come with great faith tonight. The question is, are you that person? If you are, let me see you stand on your feet. Give God praise if you have great faith and great expectation. Clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Everybody shout a cry of expectation. And then next there is an unrelenting cry. Everybody say unrelenting. Do you know what unrelenting means? Never, never quit. Never give up. Psalm 130, I'm still in Psalm 130. Crack your Bible open. He said this, David, my soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman. He said, my soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning. Indeed, more than the watchman for the morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, I'm willing to stay up all night and cry out and pray and seek your face. So my soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman of the morning. Are you with me? A person that learns, hallelujah, to, be, to believe God in spite of the contradictions, you need to understand when you've got faith and you've really got a prayer life, hallelujah, you refuse to give up. A person of persevering prayer will never quit. Say that together. We'll never quit. Everybody say a person of persevering prayer will never quit expectation is crucial expectation is the key that unlocks the door to many miracles are you with me I love what the psalmist said no actually in Proverbs Proverbs 23 and 18 he said the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off say amen Say it with me, I have expectation. How many of you came tonight with divine expectation and you believe this is the season of manifestation? I've been prophesying for the last two weeks that you and I have entered into a supernatural season and it's called suddenly. I prophesied and declared the word of God last Thursday that this is going to be a payback season for those that have fought hell and are still standing. I came to tell somebody tonight, don't give up. Your miracle's getting ready to happen. God is about to favor you financially. God is about to favor you physically. God is about to favor you maritally. God's about to blow somebody's mind. But you can't let go of your faith. You've got to stand still and you'll see the salvation of the Lord. For he will work miracles for you. Like he said Moses today. Everybody say today. Expectation. You either have it or you don't. You're either excited about what God's doing or you're not. The expectation of the righteous shall not be disappointed or cut off. God does not disappoint his people. The devil brings destruction. The devil brings disease. But not God. He's a thief, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Basic Bible. Every good and perfect gift, James says, comes from the Father of lights. In him there is no vow, but it's neither shadow cast or turning. So everything good comes from God. I'm tired of listening to people. They don't even know the Bible trying to evangelize. Well, my God, God killed my mother. God didn't kill your mother. The devil killed your mother. God don't put cancer on his children. God does not put disease on little children. I heard somebody say, if God's so good, why does he allow these little babies to die diseased in Africa and other nations where there's starvation? The problem is sin is what caused that. The devil, hallelujah, he is the one that brought destruction from the beginning. So stop blaming the devil. Stop blaming God for what the devil's doing and start learning what the Bible says and learn how to stand firm in your faith in spite of what you're experiencing. I will not allow anything I'm experiencing to contradict what God has spoken over my life. 
Hallelujah. Everybody shout, my expectation shall not be cut off. Shout right now. Release a cry to God. A person of faith never quits until God's power manifests. A person of faith never quits until God's power manifests. A person of faith never quits until God's power manifests. A person of faith never quits until God's mighty power manifests. Clap your hands and shout aloud. A loud hallelujah right now. Hallelujah. So it's an unrelenting cry. And then a cry of unity. A unified cry. A united cry. In Psalm 130, look at verse 7. Hope in the Lord. Tell somebody, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is loving kindness. And with him is abundant redemption. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. A united cry. The psalmist calls the whole nation back to God. The psalmist rises up and boldly declares calling the whole nation to prayer. Humble, faith-filled, united prayer is irresistible to Almighty God. If we're going to experience a Holy Ghost outpouring, we must be unified. The greatest visitation in Scripture came with a unified body. If we're going to experience a Holy Ghost outpouring in New York, we've got to come together. We've got to be unified. David said, come on, everybody. We've got to come back. We've got to seek God. We've got to pray. He calls the nation back to God. Tonight I've come to stand behind a pulpit and not just call the church back to prayer. But I'm here to tell every preacher in America, it's time that you and I come together, that we pray together. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked way, I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive sin and I'll heal the land. Shout aloud, hallelujah. And lastly, it has to be a right now cry. Everybody shout right now. How many of you believe with me right now that something's getting ready to happen in America? How many of you will join your faith with me that tonight God's getting ready to shake your family and bring them back to the house of God? How many of you will believe me right now? Somebody release a cry right now. The psalmist was praying. He was crying out in his time. He was crying out in a time of great desperation. And our time right now is no different. God heard him then, and God hears us now. God answered David then, and God will hear our cry tonight. I'm here to tell you, America is not too far gone for God. I believe that there's an awakening getting ready to happen, and that revival begins with me, and that revival begins with every one of you. Shout amen. Tell somebody, this is our time. Tell somebody, tell them, tell them this is our moment in history. We got to pray now. We got to believe now. We got to cry out to God now. We can't waste any more time. Say, Pastor, why are you holding that ugly book? It's brown. In here are prayer requests. Hundreds of them. People that need healing. People that need miracles. People that are dealing with cancer. People that are dealing with addiction. People that are dealing with broken families. Broken homes, broken marriages. And I, I just have enough faith tonight that God will hear our cry right now. Do I have anybody in this building? that believes that God still answers prayer. Do I have anybody in New York and watching me on social tonight? You believe that God hears the cry of his people. If you believe it, jump to your feet right now and shout, I believe God hears my cry. I want you to lift up a cry now. I want us to join our faith together. I want everybody quickly come to the altar right now because I believe tonight as we cry out right now that God is getting ready to turn battles around. 
God's getting ready to turn hearts back to him. Come on, everybody, come to this altar. You just said you believe it. Why aren't you moving? Quickly come. Pray right now. Right now, God is going to hear our prayer, and God is going to answer. In the name of Jesus, we pray tonight for Gloria, that the doctor said there's cancer. We believe you, God, for a miracle in her life tonight. We believe right now, everybody, lift your voice. Lord, we rebuke any cancer. We curse it in the name of Jesus. For those that are dealing with infirmity or any, any form of malfunction, we pray, we cry out tonight. We lift our voices loud. We lift it high, we lift it loud. Father, we thank you tonight you hear our cry. You said this poor man cried and you heard him and delivered him out of all his trouble. We thank you, God, that many are the afflictions of the righteous, Psalm 34, 19, but you shall deliver us out of them all. Come on, everybody, stir your faith on this Thursday night. I need everybody in this room, go to war with me because tonight we've come to release a cry for revival. Children to be set on fire. Parents to be set on fire. Families to be set on fire. Schools to be set on fire. I'm tired of hearing about these senseless shootings and the loss of life and children being gunned down. I'm sick and tired of this garbage. It's time we cry out. It's time we release a cry. It's time we release an unrelenting cry. It's time we stand up. It's time we speak out. It's time to declare war on the kingdom of darkness. It's time to cry out for children, for grandchildren, for sons, and for daughters. Somebody cry out. Somebody stop looking at everybody in this room and look into the face of God for the hundreds of people. As you stretch your hands this way, Lord, we believe you. We claim our families for eternity. We claim our children for eternity. We claim mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers for eternity. We cry out. We cry out with expectation. We cry out with unity. We cry out now for the time of revival is now. The hour of the awakening has come. Are you revived? Are you spiritually in tune? Are you awake? Are you alert? Because now is the high time. Our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. I want everybody that's full of the Holy Ghost to pray with all your might now. Come on. To pray for lost loved ones now. Come on. You could do much better than that. Well, I'm tired. It doesn't matter. When the Holy Ghost takes over, it's him praying through you. That's how I know people are not connected. They cannot pray with longevity because they're yielding to their feelings. Get out of the flesh. Step into the Spirit. Let the glory of God come upon you. Let the fire of God fall on you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray with passion. Pray with power. Pray with fire. Come on, come on, come on, people. I want you to focus on your family because people sometimes they're so narrow-minded they can't see anybody else's need because they're stuck on their own needs so let's start there in the infancy stage of your faith let's pray for those that are connected to you go ahead pray for children grandchildren loved ones mothers fathers sisters brothers cousins aunts uncles grandparents nephews nieces come on pray 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 we're about to break every spirit of addiction over this generation come on come on pray effectually pray fervently for the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man that is the only prayer that god says will avail much pray pray with affection pray with fervency pray with urgency pray with intensity pray with fervency pray with intensity pray with urgency pray with fervency pray with intensity pray with urgency are you expecting prayer 
pray with faith. Pray believing God hears you. He says, even when you're called, I'll answer. Even while you're in the midst of crying, he's saying, oh, here I am. Get ready. God's moving for you. God's moving for your children. God's moving for your grandchildren. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody pray. Somebody grab somebody by the hand and pray boldly. Grab somebody on your left. Somebody on your right. We're united. Grab somebody's hand. Pray now. Grab somebody's hand. Pray now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray with desire. But most of all, pray with fire. Come on. Shanda, the fire will never go out. You got to stir it up. You got to throw another log on the fire. If you don't, the fire will die. Pray, pray. When you pray, the fire grows. When you tap into the supernatural power of God, the glory of God begins to increase and His power begins to intensify. Pray, everybody. Come on, pray. I should feel the glory coming off of you. I should feel the presence of God coming from you. Come on, pray. Devil, you will not have my children. Devil, you will not have this generation. Devil, you will not have Long Island. Devil, you will not have New York. Devil, you will not have America. We claim this nation for the glory of God. We believe God. There are massive millions of people that are getting ready to come into the kingdom and you're going to use us to make a difference. Pray, 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 pray. When you break through in the spirit, there is, it is impossible for oppression to stay on your mind. See, you're praying in the natural. You got to tap into the power. You got to get in the river. You got to flow in the anointing. Come on. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Pastor, have you ever preached tired? Many times. I preach through it. And I break through it by the Holy Ghost. Have you ever preached sick? Many times. And when the power of God takes over, sickness leaves. I rebuke disease. Anybody you know that is believing for a miracle or struggling physically, let's pray now. We send the healing word of God. Miracles. We send miracles to families and children. Those that are in hospitals. We send the miracle power of God. You send your word and heal them. We send the word. Lord, by your stripes, they are healed tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, say the Lord of hosts. Say the Lord of hosts. Come on, let's go to warfare. Switch gears. Switch, shift, shift. Go to warfare. Warfare. The weapons of our warfare are not weak, but they're mighty to the demolishing of strongholds. The weapons we have, use your weapon. Use your weapons. Prayer is a weapon. Prayer is a weapon. Cancel demonic assignments, satanic strategies in prayer tonight. You have loved ones that are lost. Break it tonight. Break the curse. Break the curse. That's why the devil's attacking many of you because he know he lost you and he knows you're the one that is going to reverse the curse in your family. He knows you're the one that's the chain breaker for your family. He's mad that he lost you and he's trying to stop you, but he is defeated and you are more than a conqueror. Pray! Sarababo, Rebebo, Sunday, Nebacarababasia. 
Come on, miracles are being activated. I feel it in my spirit now. Miracles are being activated right now. Breakthroughs are happening right now. Somebody's getting a phone call this weekend that says, I'm ready to come back to church. Some of you about to get a phone call and say, can you pick me up for service? Come on, pray. Keep on praying. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. Come on, we're praying for their release. As the church prayed for Peter's release in prison in Acts chapter 12, they were praying fervently unto God for Peter's deliverance from prison. How many of you have family members that are in prison? They may not be in a physical prison, but they're behind bars and in chains spiritually. But tonight, prison doors are about to open. Tonight, chains are getting ready to fall off their life. We're getting ready to see children and grand. I'm telling you what I believe. We're getting ready to see children and grandchildren set free. Those that are bound by addiction. Those that are bound by perversion. Those that are bound by this spirit of this age. Religion. Alcoholism. Perversion. Rebellion. Disobedience. We break it tonight. They're coming out. I said they're coming out. You got children and grandchildren, they're coming out of sin. They're coming out of disobedience. They're going to surrender. They're going to surrender this year. This is the year of surrender. This is the year that they will answer the call of God. Somebody release a war cry. Somebody release a cry for revival. It has to come from deep down in your spirit. It's not something that is released from the flesh, but it's something that is activated in your spirit that comes out of your mouth. Begin to call out your loved one's names. Go ahead, begin to call out their names loud. Scream it out, devil, you can't have a one of them. You can't have them, Cry, call their name out. Cry out to God for them. You will not have sons and daughters. We claim them tonight for all of eternity in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, somebody pray. Somebody cry out. Somebody lift your voice. Come on, come on, come on. This cancer, this cancer that the doctors want to remove this tumor that is near the kidneys. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. She's going for surgery on Monday. Lord, I've been praying over this since Monday night and I believe you're doing it in the name of Jesus. For the other hundreds of requests that are on these cards and other letters that are in my notebook, God, I'm asking you to turn it around supernaturally suddenly in Jesus name somebody pray in the Holy Ghost for 60 seconds Devil, we bind you. We bind your activity. We bind your works. We command you to cease and desist all of your activity in the lives of those that we're burdened for tonight. In the name of Jesus, we declare that burden shall be lifted and every yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. In the name of Jesus, we break, we destroy every assignment against our loved ones we claim our community for eternity this perverted pride assignment we send confusion into the enemy's camp these laws 
that are being passed, we command it to stop and these laws to be overturned. In the mighty name of Jesus, these laws that they're passing to try and operate and use authority publicly over our own children. We renounce the works of the enemy. Father, we pray that the enemy's plans will be uncovered and exposed. We pray tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. We send a deployment of angels to our schools. Lord, deploy angels to every college campus, to every elementary school. We pray that the spirit of destruction, every assignment of those that are trying to kill the lives of kids, take these souls. Lord, we stand in the gap tonight. We cry out for our nation. We cry out for our school systems. We cry out for our generation. Jesus. Enough is enough. Enough is enough, devil. You've come this far, but you're not coming any further. The blood is against you. The blood is against you. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. I plead the blood over every child that is connected to this ministry. Those that are watching that aren't even members of our ministry. We plead the blood over you. We plead the blood over your children. We pray that your children will go to school in safety and return safely. In the name of Jesus. We build a prayer covering over the children of this church. I feel the Holy Ghost right now to do this. I need everybody to pray with me another moment. We build a prayer covering right now in the name of Jesus over every child that is connected to this ministry. Over your children, over your grandchildren. Devil, you won't touch them. You won't touch them. The blood is against you. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Come on, stay with me. Pray for another moment. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shande Bukonda Ramanda Salaya. De da Bakore Babashinda Rabokori Ataya. Shanda Rabo Sande la Bokori Bibi Sita la Bakoya. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we stand in the gap. We stand in the gap. We push back every power of darkness. We push back the powers of darkness. We push back the powers of darkness. Principalities, we push them back. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We war in the spirit. We cry in the spirit. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, save our families. Jesus, save this generation. Jesus, set young people on fire. Set this generation on fire for your glory. For your glory. For your glory. Jesus, we love you. We need you more than ever. We've got to have you. We can't live without you. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 
Shandara Babasa. Every one of us should have a burning desire for more of God. If you don't, you got to check your heart. You got to have a heart check. Every one of us should be more on fire today than ever before. Amen. Somebody release one more cry to your God. Come on, come on, clap your hands, give him praise, give him glory. Come on, shout the victory, somebody. Shout the victory, somebody. If you got victory, shout. If you got victory, shout. I don't feel like it. That's why you don't obey the instruction. Shout. Don't wait till the battle's over. You got to shout now. How many of you will pray with me and believe with me? that every prayer request will become a praise report. I hate disease. I have a holy hatred for disease. I can't explain it. It is not a natural thing. It's a holy hatred. Sickness and disease are the work of the enemy. Spirits of infirmity, the work of the enemy. Are you with me? That's why we got to reach more souls than ever before. We have a mandate on this ministry, and I don't apologize for it, to reach more souls in Long Island than we've ever reached before. Can you say amen? amen. Sunday's an op another opportunity for you to bring somebody. Saturday's another opportunity to go on the streets with our army of radical, sold-out, Holy Ghost-filled warriors and win souls for the glory of God. Every Saturday we're on the streets. I'll be back out next Saturday. I love going out. I love being out on the streets to witness. I love giving people words of knowledge. And they're like, do I know you? I'm like, I don't, but God knows you. Are you with me? And I want to see more people saved. How about you? Is that your heart to see more people saved and set free? I know many of you are such a blessing every week. You generously invest in the vision and the ministry. And tonight is no different. Another week, new responsibilities, exciting days ahead. Amen. I said exciting days ahead. We're so excited about what God's doing. So I need every generous giver. If you're a generous giver, can I see your hand? I'm talking to you tonight. I'm talking to you. So much to do. If you need an envelope, just hold your hand up quickly. We'll bring them to you. Quickly hold your hands up. I'm going to ask everybody that is a generous giver to do something generous. If you are a generous giver, do something generous. Give something. Be obedient. Give generously. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. How many of you, God, can count on you? How many of you count on God? Can he count on you? Can God count on you to do something special tonight in this offering? Well, I don't feel like it. Don't matter how you feel. Give in faith, believing. Pastor, you don't know my, I have, I have a financial need. I need a miracle. That's how you get out of your debt. You give your way out. You need a harvest, you sow a seed for a harvest. People come to me all the time, Pastor, I need increase financially. You're not going to have it. You're not going to see it. Until you learn to sow a seed. A seed can change everything. One seed can change everything. I've seen young people in this church, middle-aged people, elderly, blessed, financially, supernaturally, by the hand of God. Because they gave generously to the work of God. Listen to me. When you, when you get concerned about what's on the heart of God, God will get with concerned about what's on your heart. What you make happen for God's work, he makes happen for your life. Are you with me? How many givers do I have? Shoot your hand up if you're a giver. If you're a taker. If you're a taker. Let me see all the takers' hands. If you're a giver, shout, I'm a giver. And I have rights. Say with me, I'm a giver. And I have rights. The Bible says if you give, he'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You shall not have room enough to receive. If you give, the Bible says he'll rebuke the devourer. That has devoured and destroyed your harvest. 
and it will happen no more. Are you with me? You have rights. The problem is people don't know their rights. You got to know your rights as a child of God. You got to know that you're a covenant carrier and you serve a covenant keeper. Say amen. How many of you are blessed? Let me see your hand if you're blessed. Smile like you're blessed. Hallelujah. What a night tonight. Great night. Move of God. Prayer. The word of God. Lives are changed. I love you online tonight. Show your best. Give your best. Don't forget, this Sunday morning, 11 a.m., it's going to be an awesome time. Evangelist Tommy Hollihan will be preaching this Sunday. I'll be here as well. It's going to be a double portion weekend. Amen. Saturday evangelism. Get out on the streets. Win souls. God says if you do, you're wise. I love you. Bring your envelopes. Come on down. Sow your best. Those of you that submitted the lives of your loved ones on these cards, know this. I'll be praying over them every day until your family is saved. Are you with me? Come and honor God. If you're texting your offering, do it right now. I believe God's getting ready to raise up millionaires that will finance the end time harvest of souls in this church. Let me say that again. It's not for everybody, but it could be for you. So let me say it again if you missed it. I believe that God is raising up millionaires that are going to finance the end time harvest of souls through this church. Let me try one more time. I believe God's getting ready to raise up millionaires that are going to finance the end time harvest of souls through this church. Some of you are a little slow, I guess. Let me say it one more time. God's getting ready to rip millionaires that will finance the end time harvest of souls through this church. Why not? Oh, why not? I'm tired of watching the world. I'm tired of seeing the wicked with all their property and all their land and all their houses and all their stuff. God's getting ready to take it out of their hands and put it into the hands of the righteous for the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the righteous. But you can't believe that or expect it until you sow that which you already have. Come on down. Bring your offering. Sow your best. I love you. Good night online. Hallelujah. I believe you were blessed by today's message. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms so you can stay connected to all that's happening right here at Jesus is Lord Church. Olga and I would love to connect with you. So come and be a part of any one of our worship experiences every Thursday night, 7 p.m., Sunday mornings, 11 a.m. Also, we want to join our faith with you. Do you need a miracle? Are you believe in God for something extraordinary in your life? You can send up your prayer request to today to prayer at jilc.org if you've been blessed by this message then sow a seed be a part of what we're doing not just here on long island but around the world all the ways to give are on the screen right there we love you until next time be blessed